Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Arseniy Reutov. This is Fyodor Sakharov, and today we'll be speaking about uh, detected web attacks with recurrent neural networks. So, before we start, uh, a little bit about ourselves. Uh, I'm an application security researcher at Positive.com. Positive.com is an application security company, and Fyodor is a software developer at Sum.com. Uh, Sum is a decentralized computing platform. So our presentation will be divided into three parts. We will start with the problem, uh, the challenges of web attack detection. Then we will move to the actual solution, uh, the anomaly detection for uh, HTTP requests with attacks using deep learning, and then we will finish with our results, demo, and our plans. So the first part, uh, I would like to speak about uh, the problem. So we are solving the problem of web attack detection. So what are web uh, web attacks? Uh, the Systems that aim at detecting web attacks are called web application firewalls. Uh, these are the systems that protect uh, websites and web applications against uh, the attacks on the higher high level of uh, OSI uh, L7, L7 uh, attacks. The first commercial WAFs appeared about 20 years ago and the most known open source WAF is mod security. Uh, typically, uh, WAFs operate as a reverse proxy, so we have uh, some intermediate uh, server that processes the traffic, web traffic, and then proxies it to the backend. And mostly, uh, WAFs use pattern matching nowadays, still use it to detect web attacks. From WAF perspective, there are basically two types of uh, web attacks. Uh, the first one is time series based, so that uh, it means that uh, the attacker uh, tries uh, to make different multiple requests to perform his attack. It may be a web scraping, brute forcing, for example, a login page, fingerprinting to detect the version of your web server, or scanning, for example, for vulnerabilities. And the second one, the second type of attacks is based on a single request, a single pair of HTTP requests and HTTP response. Uh, these attacks can be detected on per request basis. These are, for example, SQL injection, cross-site scripting, XML external entities injections injections and all other attacks that are basically uh, some kind of injection into some HTTP parameter. And the um, focus of our research will be the second type of attack. So we do not uh, analyze uh, at present uh, the sequences, but we analyze uh, single requests and try to detect and analyze single requests uh, to detect uh, some uh, patterns of web attack injections. Now I would like to compare classic uh, pattern matching to machine learning approach. Uh, pattern matching is effective to detect known uh, attack vectors and it can be easily maintainable, it's just a text file. You can open it in any text editor and uh, add your uh, additions or you can delete anything or you can maintain it via uh, version control such as Git. And it can be pretty fast. Uh, the results are always predictable and rules and patterns uh, can work out of the box. So you don't need to mostly uh, uh, tune it for particular websites so it can uh, work for 
majority of websites. But of course, false, false positives can happen. Uh, there are also some disadvantages of pattern matching, such that uh, they are subject to a check themselves. So if you uh, write a pattern that is uh, not well thought of, that is that contains some vulnerabilities itself, then it can be subject to such attacks like regio. So you can perform denial of service on the pattern that is buggy. Uh, and patterns are typically easy bypassed by hackers. So if they have a valve that, is, uh, that uses patterns to block, for example, SQL injections, it's, it can be easily bypassed. And of course, it's not so effective at catching zero days, so unknown vectors that, so uh, pattern matching cannot extrapolate to uh, unknown vectors. And to write a pattern, to write some rule, you of course need to understand what you're projecting from. So you need extensive web security knowledge. And yeah, pattern matching causes lots of false positives. So let's see what benefits and disadvantages uh, presents machine learning. Uh, the biggest advantage, of course, is that machine learning can extrapolate. It can detect previously unseen samples. Uh, and usually it's not so easy to bypass. Uh, it's also pretty fast, if we are speaking about just the forward pass, not training. And uh, it doesn't require web security knowledge, uh, especially if we speak about deep learning when you don't need to extract features prior to training. And uh, the dis disadvantages of machine learning is that it requires some time, of course, to, to be trained. Um, the results are difficult in, to interpret. It's it just uh, uh, a decision, zero, uh, or one, it just tells that there is something in this particular request that is uncommon, but uh, I cannot tell you what is uncommon, what kind of uh, vulnerability or a check is in this particular request. And you cannot predict uh, the behavior of uh, a trained model uh, if we compare to rules and patterns. And models are not so easy to maintain. You cannot just open it in a text file and uh, modify it. You always need to retrain it. So these were the problematics. Um, now I would like to state the goals of our research. There are three of them. The first one is that we uh, would like to uh, create a deep learning model that does not require uh, feature extraction prior to training. The second one is that uh, these models should solve the anomaly detection problem in HTTP requests. And finally, this model should yield interpretable results. Um, what is an anomaly if we are speaking about HTTP requests? Uh, in fact, it can be anything. Uh, it can be just a request that has, uh, for example, three headers, HTTP headers, instead of normal 20. Or it can be a spam, or it can be even a zero J attack. Uh, and the model should understand the intention of this HTTP request, whether it is malicious or not, like in classic movie sentiment uh, problem. And of course, malicious and benign classification is gr greatly depends on the uh, samples and the history of previous observations. Uh, I, there are uh, three examples that I want to share with you, uh, just to show um, how important to be able to uh, take into account the context and the history of the previous observations. Um, if you're 
a web security enthusiast, uh, of course, you would um, notice here that this request has a string that uh, is very, uh, resembles an SQL injection attempt. But without context, we cannot say that it is a real SQL injection or not. Uh, so, in fact, this request uh, comes from a backtracking system known as Jira. And they use uh, the special query syntax called JQL. And uh, a pattern matching approach would uh, detect this request uh, as an attack because obviously there are some keywords uh, that uh, that are a sign of an SQL injection. But in fact, this uh, request is benign and it shouldn't be classified as an attack. Let's see this example. Uh, in this request, you can see a post parameter uh, that has some HTML markup. Uh, just looking at this example, we cannot say that this request is actually an attack again. But uh, web security hackers uh, would definitely try to inject their some, for example, script checks to see if there is an XSS vulnerability. Uh, again, a pattern matching approach uh, would definitely block this request because there are some HTML checks. Uh, but in fact, this is uh, a request that is also benign uh, and this markup is allowed for this particular website. And only knowing the previous states, previous observations, we, uh, the model uh, can tell that this uh, HTTP request is actually benign. And the search example, uh, this uh, request is, as you can see in the host header, it comes from a content management framework called Joomla. And looking at the uh, task parameter, you can see that this is a, probably a typical user registration. But in fact, uh, there is an additional parameter, as you can see, uh, user groups, which is equal to seven, uh, which is, uh, in fact, a, an, an exploit for uh, Joomla, which escalates privileges and allows to register anyone uh, as a, a administrator on any Joomla prior to 364. Um, and again, this is a contrary example uh, when a pattern matching approach would just uh, let this uh, request pass because it doesn't contain any injections. It just has uh, an additional parameter with the value seven. So it typically would not be blocked. But a module that is properly trained and our model would Tag this uh, request as an attack. So the next part is actual uh, solution, how our model works and how it was built. All right. Uh, please raise your hands, those of you who know what a neural network is. All right. Now, those of you who know what is a Convolu convolutional ne neural network is, right? And recurrent neural network? Okay, LSTM? Good. Um, so, I guess I'll have to spend a little bit more time on this. Um, we decided to build these machine learning algorithms, uh, just like a proof, proof of concept. Uh, in inside our web application uh, framework uh, the um, protection so uh, first of all we tried uh, to build a classifier and well what we tried to do is we tried to collect some benign data 
And obviously, we didn't have any malicious data for some example web, web application. So we had uh, to um, generate, generate some uh, malicious examples. So it would look something like this. There would be uh, requests which are labeled malicious, and some of them would be labeled uh, benign. So let's try to build a classifier. Um, well, what is an HTTP protocol? It is a text-based protocol, and each line of it is an independent sen sentence. Um, it consists of headers, URI, which are not that long, uh, some body, it may be somehow encoded, like whatever. Uh, and well, it's text and it's sequential in nature, and for example, the values of the parameters, they depend on the names of the parameters, so it would be a weird thing to see um, an IP address uh, in the connection header or something uh, uh, weird. So we decided to use recurrent neural networks for analyzing text data. They uh, deal pretty well with um, uh, texts. And it's a class of neural networks that can work with sequential data. The data which is varies in its uh, size and its uh, sequences um, where like normal texts or music or movies or whatever. Um, first we tried to use uh, simple recurrent neural networks and we built a classifier on top of it. Uh, and uh, tried to evaluate our results, which were somewhat good, but however, there are known problems. Uh, the results are not interpretable in classification. Uh, you just get a label and you don't know uh, why model considers something to be malicious or benign. Uh, so your user, which uh, is probably not a security expert, will have no way of understanding the decisions of your model. Uh, also, you have a need to construct the malicious data, which is tricky because you can just like take your benign samples, inject some known uh, attack sequences to them, and call that um, your malicious uh, data set, which is kind of weird because uh, most likely real attacks to your web application will not uh, look uh, like the data set you generated. And it also needs manual labeling. Um, for example, you want to detect uh, SQL injections, XSS attacks, benign data, um, whatever else you want to detect. So it becomes your uh, classes, but you have to uh, label it all. And well, it um, has a certain problem if you encounter a new type of attack. Uh, it's not clear which class it will belong to. Okay, so what we tried to do is we tried to improve our classifier, and the first thing uh, we decided to add the attention layer. Attention mechanism is something that solves uh, a lot of uh, a lot of problems. Well, first of all, it aids uh, the process of learning, and it also makes the results of your um, decision process interpretable. Uh, you can use it to highlight uh, the parts of the data that your model uh, considered uh, the most important in its decisions and not highlight something that it considered not important. But it still an, it improves our situation, but it still doesn't solve uh, the problems uh, of the classification. But what if we try to detect anomalies instead of uh, trying to classify our data into SQL injections, XSS attacks, and so on and so forth? Well, the initial task of attack detection is um, more similar to it, and if you think about it, it's exactly what the human brain would do. Well, if you try to detect some anomalous attack in your web application, you would probably first detect something weird about the request, and only then you would understand that it's an SQL attack, for example. 
Uh, well, the advantage of that is that if we built a reasonable anomaly detection platform, we would no longer have to mutually label the data to generate our malicious samples. And uh, that would do it. Oh, the link embedded, not well. Well, that uh, there's a class of uh, recurrent neural networks uh, that are used mostly for machine translation or for like music generation or whatever. Uh, it is a so-called uh, encoder decoder uh, models, and they are basically two uh, different uh, recurrent networks with LSTM cells. Uh, which are uh, connected with each other with um, in the following fashion. Uh, the encoder uh, processes the inputs and it outputs the, some, some state which is a fixed sized vector. Then uh, it's fed into the decoder and also our uh, sequence fed into it and decoder outputs some target. Well, for machine translation that's used uh, obviously um, the uh, sequences are sentences, say, in English, and the target sentence is the sentence in French. So the encoder and decoder will possibly translate your English sequence to French uh, in a nice fashion. It works in like, Google Translate. And, a lot of applications nowadays. But what if our target sequence would be the same as the input sequence? Um, we could um, build a model where uh, we feed the... Uh, um, So, yeah, so what about uh, if we uh, build a model which, where the uh, targets are the same as the inputs, but not really the same, but the probabilities of the inputs, which during the learning phase would be one hot vectors. Uh, for example, if we have a, our request, the first letters of it, G, E, T, uh, we also feed it to the decoder, and the decoder outputs the possibilities of the letters, the first output is the possibility of uh, the letter G, the second of the uh, letter E, and so on and so forth. Uh, so we, what we're trying to do is to teach our encoder, uh, decoder model to reconstruct the data with some possibilities. So, um, now the outputs of the model are the probabilities of each letter in the sequence. And also we collect uh, the whole loss of uh, this uh, reconstruction pro process. And if um, the model so-called so failed to reconstruct our uh, request, then we consider that this request is anomalous. And um, it turns out that the, probabil the probabilities of the anomalous characters in the request with the, which would be considered anomalous are quite low. So um, here is a bit about how actually the input data is processed. Well, uh, earlier this day there was this great talk by, um, I don't know, so, uh, a gentleman about the reverse engineering and recurrent neural networks. He explained a bit about embeddings. Well, we also use embeddings, but we don't use the uh, word embeddings. We use uh, letter embeddings and just use uh, some uh, vocabulary uh, pre-created uh, to uh, Uh, transfer our sequences to numeric data. And also uh, the batches, uh, the data inside the batches is padded to the maximum length in the batch. Uh, it's, uh, it, it improves the learning process, I don't know why. So uh, in the end we built a model which uh, detects 
uh, an anomalies which can be visualized in the following matter. Uh, here we have an SQL injection, and you see that uh, the detection is a bit noisy, but uh, some, uh, but the letters which are considered anomalous, they are highlighted with red, and it seems that apart from the some small noise in the parts which aren't actually anomalous, like the first letters in the parameters and some um, un unknown one letter anomalies in the PHP session ID cookie. Uh, we have detected the uh, SQL injection uh, quite well. Okay, now it's, I think it's uh, the time for our uh, demo. Okay, here's a process which we actually presented uh, to some well uh, first we generate some uh, normal traffic to our test backend well it's actually a verb suit nothing special well um, there's the parameters of the traffic will be set now yeah, we use Burp Intruder to generate some traffic, to get trained, to get model trained. So we have sent some requests and assume that the module is ready and now we will try to send some attacks to the target web application. It's a sample, it's a demo uh, banking application that we have built for testing our different uh, machine learning models. So firstly, we try to uh, submit an SQL injection, and it, it was refused. Then we logged in as uh, a regular user. Now we try to perform some payment. Uh, we do a tra money transaction, and in the comment field, you have seen the a part of uh, some uh, access as a check, just a sample. And this is the interface of a uh, enterprise WAF, and you can see uh, how these uh, uh, anomalous requests are locked into into some actual WAF. Now here's the, some interesting part. We are trying to do the uh, I don't know how it's called, the uh, SQL split injection? It's, yeah, it's fragmented SQL injection. As you see, it's split into two parameters. As traditional pattern machine would typically just analyze uh, each parameter one by one. So it would miss this attack because it doesn't see the whole uh, payload. But uh, machine learning approach, on the contrary, would detect it as it analyzes the whole HTTP request instead of uh, particular parameters inside it. And again, you can see the detection being logged to the web interface of our WAF. Yeah, and it's quite interesting because, well, this problem with uh, this kind of uh, SQL injections, we uh, addressed it separately, and we even built a separate tool which uh, tried to detect uh, some sophisticated SQL injections by like parsing SQL grammar and whatever. And it turned out that uh, the generalized neural network can also detect these kinds of uh, sophisticated attacks just as well as uh, the tool that we built specifically for detecting. Uh, these types of injections. All right, so it looks like we have uh, created a deep learning model that uh, does not require, require the prior feature extraction. It just can look at the data online which is flowing to the web applications of your, for example, client or your own web applications and use it to learn the, mm, how the normal requests to your apps uh, look like. Uh, it detects the anomalies uh, in the future traffic after the learning phase. 
and it, which uh, I think like the most important result of our work, it yields interpretable results. So your client or you, you yourself would know why um, the model considers something anomalous or not. Uh, we have open sourced this work uh, as a uh, Jupyter notebook. You can uh, see it on this GitHub link provided below. Uh, please do run it. The, I think there's some some data from uh, from the bank application. Yeah, from the bank application. Uh, please run it. Please try to uh, train the model. Please try to verify our results. Uh, that will be very help helpful. And I hope uh, some of you will come up with the new ideas how to improve it. Um, there will be some weird things in the code which you will probably notice. Uh, feel free to ping us whenever you want about them, like for example how the thresholds for anomalies are chosen. Um, it's quite obvious in the code, uh, but it looks like kind of magic now. And for the future work, well, there's uh, a lot to be improved. First of all, we need to optimize the, the learning time because now it takes like five hours for the data set that we have open sourced uh, on a high-end GPUs. We also need, uh, it would be a great idea to now build the classifier on top of the anomaly detection. So if we have detected some anomalous sequence, uh, it, has a, um, it is a good point to try to classify it, whether it is an SQL injection or XSS now because we have stripped all the normal data uh, from the, our request. And improve the threshold cal calculation. Well, now the threshold is calculated uh, in some sophisticated way. We have a hypothesis that uh, we have a normal distribution and for our learning data set, we calculate the parameters of these distributions, which we later use in the uh, threshold calculation. And this is used for anomaly detection. Well, cases like that have to be uh, proven or whatever in a more scientific manner because it may look like an exponential distribution more to someone so that has to be improved a lot. All right, thank you. Uh, 